Hi everyone, this is Richard. In this video, let's talk about await for versus listen. So two ways in which we can access the streams is using await for and listen, which we've used in the past. Listen most recently. Um, we can always use the dot for each or something like that, but these are just two of the ways in which we can access the information and we commonly use. So what's the difference between the two and when do you use them? Because you'll see them in code in both situations. An await for, not an await, await is for future, right? Await for is for streams. When you have to hold up everything, so stop everything right here, get the, all of the data, wait for the stream to complete, and then you can move on. That's the await for. The listen is, if I'm getting this information, I can do other stuff. I don't really need the information right now, but when it comes in, then I'll access the information. Okay, so a wait for is what we call blocking. It'll stop everything until this goes through. Listen, get it whenever you need to, whenever you can, okay? Generally, you use a wait for when there's a finite set of data. These are not hard and fast rules, but I just asked somebody and that's what they told me, okay? So it's a finite set of data. So it's when I have this piece of information, and it goes there, then I use a wait for. So if you think about it, listen, you wouldn't do a wait for in when you're talking about an on click, right? So an HTML element on click dot listen, you wouldn't do on a wait for because you'd just be waiting and you couldn't do anything before somebody clicked on an icon, right? So that would be a listen. A listen is more for broadcast, everything opposite of this, when you don't want to hold up everything, um, uh, when you have an infinite set of data like an on click dot listen, right? You're doing everything else, you might never click on it. So that's that's not a finite, that's not a set amount of data there. Um, and then a broadcast streams when you wanna to listen to multiple things also, okay? So let's just go over the code here itself. I'll just say list my list and then stream, first stream, stream dot for, from iterable my list. So it'll just send again, like I mentioned before, send out a list of one, two, three, four, five as a stream. And the second stream I'm just going to have right down here. It's just a, the same concept for int i yield i, okay? So the first thing we'll do is the await. Like I said, it'll stop everything, do it, wait till it's finished, and then move on. So what it should do is this is first. It'll do the, all this, print 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and then print this is second. And that's what it'll do, okay? Await for int i in first stream first stream right here, it's a list, right, with right here, but the stream sent through as a list. Note it's an int, though, okay, because it's going to be sent as individual integers through the stream. And so when we run it, what we'll see is this is first, it awaits for this, stops everything, gets the information, and then it goes on from here, right? Finite set of data, use it, utilize it right here. What if you want to use the first stream dot listen, right? In this circumstance, again, you don't have to wait for up for things. So it'll probably print this, then this, and then when it finally gets to this, it'll get to that, okay? Because that's not blocking. And that's what we see, first, second, and then it gets to that, this later on in the system in and of itself, okay? So I hope that's clear the differences between the two. Now, let's look at a couple other things. Async, okay? Notice right here, async, and notice right here, async asterisks. What's the difference? So async is when you are, so when you use async, when you use await or await for, right? Await for, you use await when you use futures, you use await for when you talk about streams. But wait a minute, why is this await for and this is an async without an asterisk? When you wait for one thing, when you wait for, for one thing, it's going to be an async without an asterisk. That's why they use it for future, all right? That's just a way of telling, just having it nice and easily readable. As a programmer, if you could see this and you're reading somebody else's code, there's no asterisk. Oh, you're looking for one piece of data, okay? And here it actually is just one piece of data. Even though it is getting some more information right here, you're not returning more than one thing. That's the, the thing I'm, that's the key. So when you return something, you return one thing, right? When you yield something, you're, you're releasing multiple pieces of data. Here, this is a void, so we're not returning anything, so it's gonna be an async. 
I should say wait for at, at most one thing. If you put a return here and you're returning only one thing, that's it, and then it ends the stream, then it would be an async as well. If it's a yield where you're yielding more than one piece of data, then it would be a asterisk, okay? So async, await for, or await, async asterisk, yield. And so, so I hope that that's clear. Here, we're clearly getting the stream, we're shooting out one after the other, so this would be async. Wait a minute, a async asterisk. But because of here, in and of itself, we're not yielding anything in this type of stream. So this streams are sending out, we're not yielding anything, it's just automatically being sent through right inside of here. We don't actually have to put an async asterisk because we're not yielding anything. All right, so it's, it's kind of interesting how the syntax actually is, and it can be confusing because I sometimes look at this and I'm like, wait a minute, why, why would you do that? But those are basically the general gists of when you look at code, the difference between async, async, asterisk, listen, and await for, okay? Thanks.